everyone, and welcome to the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host as always, Richard Team, and this is now the award-winning fan show. That's right, my deepest and most sincere thank yous to all of you that participated in the voting. Even a simple share went so far. And as I said in my speech, which some of you may have seen go around because not all of it was recorded, so I, uh, to the best of my memory and what I said in the moment, I, I typed it all out. But there was a, a good chunk of the speech, uh, the part that I think really resonates with a lot of people, just how far this show has come. But, you know, uh, when you start a podcast, I really don't think a lot of people get into something like this thinking that they're going to there's going to be like awards and stuff. Like maybe it's a hobby that turns into something uh, more than a hobby, or or maybe you can connect with and network with the right people that it becomes a a profession that pays for itself. Uh, I don't know if, if you go into something like this thinking that it's going to pay all of your bills and, and then some, like it's going to be a career, but awards and recognition and and winning things like that for for what you do I think is pretty far down the list of of what you think could happen when you start a podcast I know that if you join like a pool league or a flag football league yeah you could win a championship at the end you could maybe even be the MVP you sign up for for fantasy football with a group of your friends maybe there's a trophy involved some money at the end but something where it's it's you against sort of everyone else and yeah this was um for the city of spokane the 2018 entrepreneurship awards i was going up against every other form of media that fell into this particular criteria and category and i honestly didn't expect to win and i did and and that's because of you fan nation so i want to thank you guys so very very much from the bottom of my heart because it was a moment that i won't soon forget and it was a feeling that i really wanted to last forever but uh i gave it through the weekend and now we're on to the next. So welcome to the new chapter of the award-winning fan show. Thank you all so very much again. I don't know what's next for the show. I just know that uh, this is the home stretch week before the second tour, Fan Show Tour 2018. Couldn't be more excited for this one uh, than I already am because I've extended and expanded the tour. We're going beyond the Midwest. We're going to make stops Carolina, Boston, and Jacksonville and cover some National Arena League. I've got good friends uh, as both players and coaches for the different teams there, and it should be a lot of fun. So hopefully everything can work out the way that it needs to. There's been a few technical glitches. Uh, Some of my shows, uh, the episodes are not showing up on SoundCloud, and as a result, not on iTunes. So I've reached out to both Spreaker and SoundCloud and like, WTF, like, (laughs) I I pay for this. What's going on? So with every good, there must come bad. And I guess if that's the worst of things right now, then I'm doing pretty okay for myself. But um I love this award. I really do. Uh, I got rid of some participation trophies that I had since I was a kid the year that I started it. I don't believe that that's a coincidence. I really don't. And um, yeah, they looked nice on a nightstand, maybe even a shelf, you know, next to other things from from childhood. But I didn't earn them. Uh, They were participation ones. And this one definitely has a different feeling. It looks so out of place on the shelf above the desktop computer amongst all the Funko Pops and things that, as a nerd, uh, I've collected over the years. But I love it. I absolutely love it. It's probably my favorite trophy ever, um, and and I don't know if I'll ever win another one. But for right now, it's my favorite. And uh, tonight, we're going to do things a little differently on the fan show. I have not one but two special guests. Uh, Manny Asprilla from the Green Bay Blizzard will be joining us closer to the bottom of the hour. But uh, right now, um, I was able to talk to the man who put the idea in my head to give this thing a go, Cameron Severins, one of my oldest friends from grade school, junior high. He was the all-star athlete that I really looked up to because I was not athletically gifted uh, in the slightest. I was the smallest kid in my class, really wanted football to work out, wanted to be that kind of Danny Woodhead-like running back, and it just it didn't take. I tried cross-country, baseball, soccer, tennis, all these, wrestling, and it just, um, I don't know. Uh, I loved band. 
but I never left my love for, for football and for sports. And so when we were talking, which we'll, we'll bring up again in our little conversation, but it was the craziest idea in my, how far we've come. And, uh, yeah. So here's that conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is me and my buddy, Cameron Severins, uh, who lives in Seattle now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining me now from the uh, rainy city of Seattle, although I'm sure it's a little bit colder there at the moment, is uh, a man who has a lot more to do with this show than I think people think, and that is Cameron Severance. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Huge fan show guy. What can I say? A big Richard Tiemann fan. <laughs> My, how the tables have turned. I used to be a huge Cameron Severance fan back in the day when you, you played some mean ball. Oh, thanks, man. Wow, yeah. Those those days are long gone. I'm a, that, was, that was about 50 pounds ago. <laughs> and quite a, bit, quite a bit more hair ago, you know. Now it's like, you know, I'm lucky if I can get on the church softball team if they'll bat me nine. <laughs> I'm sure you do just fine. But uh, I am... Um... Wanted to have you on, uh, be, and I know that I did this um, comedy uh, special kind of thing uh, last night, but um, you are, as far as scheduled programming goes, you are the first official guest on the now award-winning The Fan Show, and I think uh, people don't understand the significance of you being on because you're actually the one that gave me the idea to do this, so I kind of wanted to share this moment with you. Well, I, I'm grateful. I'm honored because, I mean, you've taken this and just, I mean, wow, what an incredible product you've created. And, and I really believe that that this is going to be uh, a huge, I mean, your talent and ability and, and, and your drive. I mean, you know, like I, I heard you uh, on your speech, you were talking about how you, you were doing the show in the in the attic of the house you were at, you know, in like the heat in the summer. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was not a fun summer <laughs> i mean i would have given up right there like now nope, i'm good it's too hot no i'll be i'll be honest there was a couple of times where i i said you know this is going to be it or this is it be, because it was just there was a lot of trials and tribulations with this thing i mean you know the the premise of the show in the very beginning was to talk football and have fun with it and every uh September, October, November, the numbers, the listens would just dip down because everybody and their mom, dad, and cousin had a, a podcast where they would be a fantasy football expert or a, a couch quarterback or a Monday morning coach or whatever they call them. And, and so it was just like white noise. It was such an oversaturated market. And I, I kind of had to adapt and overcome and, and figure out something that I could do different now. From the start of football season to the end, I don't know what or if I do anything different necessarily, but I, I'd like to think that when I rebranded and gave it the name Football and Nonsense, that the nonsense part has kind of <laughs> kicked open a door to so many avenues that it, it's it's the single, to me, it's the move that kept the show alive. Like, <laughs> There's no way around it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I agree. I th I think that I think it was a great I think it was a great move on your part. Um, I mean, the the guests you've had on too. I mean, e even the football guests. I mean, you've got people from NFL dot com. I love when you have Marcus took on, and uh, I mean, you know, the the comedy stuff is great too. But then going, you know, the IFL stuff and the Arena Football League stuff. I mean, you're an insider, man. You have official. The, the award-winning fan show and insider Richard Tiemann. That's what you are. <laughs> Which is is crazy to think about. Here you and I are about three beers in at a uh, high school reunion, our 10-year, and you come out of nowhere with this idea. Hey, man, what, how, like, how are you not an analyst? And I just was like, <laughs> you know, those guys are morons. Like, how, how dare you? And I was completely pulling your <laughs> leg. You know, I was, I was joking with you because – I, I hated ESPN so much at that time, but uh, it was it was that phrase, you know, that's like, well, hey, 
why why not try a podcast? And I'm just like, what? I, I, like, I'm trying to go back to school to open a bar, and here's the guy saying, why don't you try to start a podcast about football and, and other sports? And I, I thought it was the craziest thing, and now we're we're almost three full years later from that moment, and and it's crazy to, to look back and think about how far this thing has come. <laughs> I know. And to think it was it was birthed at the at the top of what was that place? The the Saranac rooftop or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember it vividly. We were all up on a rooftop. We were enjoying beers, and I was just like, you know, I don't I don't really care how many I have because I'm not going to see these guys for like another ten years. But you and I just got <laughs> got so into this conversation about sports. And and I forget like what specifically we were talking about, but we just like dove into it. I think it was because I called you out for how you, growing up you were a 49ers fan and and then I was too. And then, uh, you know, we lost touch and reconnected and I find out that you're living in Seattle as a Seahawks fan. And so I had to like go up to you two beers in, three beers in and go, dude, what happened? <laughs> you did too. Yeah, it was like. Like getting called out, and, I, and I'm sitting there like, well, you know, I still, I still like the 49ers, but yeah, I mean, I'm a, I mean, I'm, I'm a Hawks fan now, but I had to defend myself. I mean, I had, to, I had to use, I had to use all my, my sports knowledge powers in that moment. I was like, man, this guy should, like, this guy should be a, he should be an analyst, or he should, you know, he should have his own show. I mean, it was, it was Colin Cowherd esque, you know, <laughs> it, the way, the way you came at me, I was like, I, you know. I, I just, you know, I, I felt like I felt like you should be doing this full time. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that we had that conversation. I do have to say, though, uh, you know, the 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 overall uh, idea was still all you. You know, I mean, you you know, I, I said, hey, look, you know, you should do you should do a podcast. And I mean, you took it and ran with it, which was really impressive, because frankly, you know, by the end of the night with everyone taking shots, including my wife, by the way, <laughs> but you guys got my, my wife was so hammered. I don't even think that you realize, you know, my wife's like two drinks and she's wasted, but like you guys fed her drink after drink after drink. And then afterwards, you remember we went to that bar, what was that bar down? It was um, it, next to the Saranac or whatever. And then you're, you're still feeding her shots. And it was like, I, I had to like, I had to drag her to the car, you know, at the end of the night. Anything beyond the rooftop is such a blur. Like, I look at the pictures taken from after the the rooftop part, and I was like, where was that taken? Like, when did Jessica Yamakawa show up? Like, what what is going on here? (laughs) I know. It was like, I think there was about 10 of us. And, you know, one of the things I remember, yeah, we're out there and, and your wife and you and, and then Jessica Yamakawa. And, uh, uh, and then I, then Jeff, I, I just remember Jeff Palachuk coming up and giving me a kiss on the cheek. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is getting like, it's getting to the point where people are hammered right now. Yeah, it was, we were losing track of each other and people's significant others. And we were like, this is going to turn real bad real fast if we don't <laughs> get out of here now. But- Right, but what are ten year reunions for if not to you know go and you know get lubricated and and <laughs> try to re- try to reconnect and start podcasts? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I mean, if that's not what your your sole purpose is at a ten year reunion, I, I think you, you're going in there with the wrong purpose and the wrong ideal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that should be one of your segments. Is you know, I, I, in my twenty year reunion, this is the next thing that I'm going to start. You know, that should be. Yeah, that should be on your 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 next segment list. If you ever run out of ideas, which you don't seem to do, but I think that's an idea for you. Well, here here's the really funny part is that I remember uh, leading up to the ten year reunion. I but before I got married, I was uh, talking with James Lehman, and I said, you know, my ten year is going to show up. And, and I'm going to be that guy there that is so out of place because I'm not going to be married. I'm not going to have any kids, a steady relationship, maybe, but that's like a huge wild card. And I'm going to be that guy that laughs awkwardly when guys are making jokes about like the, the issues or or the things that have happened with their kids. And I'm going to be like, yeah, kids, right? Like so out of place. And he's like, but, (laughs) but everyone is going to look to you because you're the odd one out, like in the best way, like they're going to have to try to live vicariously through you because that's not them anymore. And I was like, I don't know if I can, if I want to be that guy or if I can, and he's like, you'll be fine. And so then all of a sudden I go and, and I get married, no kids. And I show up to this thing 
And and I'm just like, I don't think that I've done anything overly impressive over the last 10 years. So I, I feel like I'm just a body. And now every year that the show continues, I'm like, why can't it be like the 10 year reunion now where I can go and be like, hey, like, check out what I did this year. No, ex- exactly. Well, that, that's my sole claim to fame now, too, because, you know, leading up, I had some of the similar thoughts. I mean, you know, I was, I was you know, married and stuff, but. You know, now I can, you know, anticipating our 20-year reunion, I can say, yeah, you know, the fan show. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. It's Richard team and it's great. And I'll be like, yeah, you know, I uh, I gave him the idea for that. And then, I'll, <laughs> and then you know, that you know that look people gave you and they're like, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, right. That's the look I'm going to get. But you know what? At least we know it's true. Really? You know, that's, that's, that's the important thing. We totally do. And I remember when I created this thing, it was so secondary because I had – the perfect logo and and design and setup for the bar I was going to open for the karaoke bar that I was going to go through business school and come out on the other end and have this place picked out and redecorate it. And it was going to be awesome. So while I'm there having the logo guy, I'm giving him the idea and saying, this is what I want. And I, I go, Oh yeah. And I, I'm going to start this podcast. Like this is the name I'm thinking. Like, can you do just like throw something together for it? <laughs> And so he, <laughs> I, I pay for two logos, one that is just perfect, like everything that I wanted. And it's the logo that I don't even use. And the other one lasted all of like nine months until I scrapped it, <laughs> rebranded and, and went from the butt fumble show. That was a complete joke <laughs> to the fan show now. <laughs> and it's just crazy to look back, you know, almost three years ago now and think about just how far along everything has come. It's still it makes me think like there should it should have been longer that this stuff has happened. But no, it's it's all happened and happened so fast that sometimes it still feels like, you know, is when was that? And, and when did I do that? And it's like it's only been that long and stuff will show up in my timeline and my memories. And I'm just like, wow, like that. I thought that was longer ago. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's, it's crazy too, because I, I, I think about those, those, you know, beginning shows and, 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 and listening to them and, and, and like the progress you've made at the same time, it's like, you've come so far so fast and you're so good. I mean, you put together tours, man. Like you put together fan show tours. I mean, and you're, it's like, that's amazing to me. You know, I'm like, you're like, oh, I'm in Bloomington, you know, Indiana. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Bloomington, Indiana. For the IFL, you know, and, and it's like, I'm just sitting there going, man, this guy is doing it, you know, and, and in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, I, I, I remember, I remember Richard knowing his stuff. I remember you always knew your sports stuff, you know, and it, but I mean, your ability, you, you have a natural ability to, to host a show it, and you do a great job of it. And you can see that with, you know, you've had the guys from broke, you know, the broken lizard guys on, um, uh, I mean, the, uh, and and oh, by the way, are, do you get are you do you have free tickets to the new um, uh, Super Troopers? By the way, I mean, can you hook me up with some of those or like, what? I, I wish that our relationship was that close, but sometimes like I can't even get like a retweet back from from the guys on Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it's like like you've been on my show, like come on. <laughs> It's a it's a tough gig because there's guys uh, some of the relationships that I have now with people that have been guests on the show are are so beyond what I even thought. Like Mark Istook, who you mentioned, who's uh, basically a regular on the show by now, and I love having yeah. him on just because of his variety of knowledge from from football to like uh, pop culture and entertainment. Because he's hosted like the red carpet at the the Emmys and stuff, and so him and I first met on Twitter when I called him a douchebag on Twitter, and he responded <laughs> to it. Like, it was one of those moments where you're just like, oh, this guy's an idiot. I'll respond, and there's no way he reads it. And then he responds to you, and you're just like, uh, like, foot in mouth, and now you've got a backpedal. <laughs> and now he's a semi-regular on the show, and it's just like, that happened from that. Or, like, when I met Farouk because I was covering BattleBots, and he's one of the biggest Philly fans, and I had him on after the Eagles won the Super Bowl. And he was, like, all ready to celebrate and just talk up his Eagles like it's – it's just crazy to think about some of these relationships that I've made since the show started. Oh, it's yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I think the BattleBots is a is a really cool thing. You know, my my dad. I don't know if you know this was the robotics instructor for East Valley High School for like ten years. I do remember and, that. Yeah, and he loved. I was like, "You dad, you got to listen to this." He's he's doing a BattleBot. <laughs> 
you know, segment. And, and I, you know, I never, I never got a chance to really follow up with him on that, but you know, he did see some of the pictures on Facebook, you know, and how old people, they don't really know how to use Facebook or whatever, but um, you know, he's like, he's like, yeah, that's really cool. You know? And, and I was like, man, you know, you really just diversify, which I, which I thought was great. You know, and, and, and uh, yeah, for, for Ruth talking about his Eagles, you know, the, the Eagles fans, I mean, I'm really happy for him, by the way, just a little side note, but um, I mean, what's going on with the whole Chris going the, the lamppost? Like, I mean, like, it, like, like we all know Eagles fans are the worst fans ever. Like they, like ever, everyone knows that like, if, unless you are from Philadelphia or you're an Eagles fan that, that they pretty much will do like, like you have a propensity to get in a fight. Like if you go to an Eagles game, like you're going to get in a fight. Like, and it's like Eagles fans, like we, we wanted you to break the stereotype. You had a chance and you did, you failed us. Like, you failed as Eagles fan, and and even though you want to see Roll with them, I'm very happy for you. You used Crisco on your light pole. Just from, <laughs> that's what I'll remember. I'm not going to remember Nick Falls beating Tom Brady. I'm going to remember Crisco on the light pole. That's what I'm remembering. Oh, and that wasn't even the worst of it. The worst of it was the the day of the Super Bowl. They were putting, I think, motor oil on the light poles. Like they <laughs> upped it from from <laughs> Crisco really? to full on motor oil. Like it, try to try to hustle your way up this, and they're like challenge accepted. Like you know, I'm I'm four four beers <laughs> deep here. <laughs> we're gonna make this thing happen. Oh, but yeah, Philly fans will never let you down. Um, it was hilarious talking to Colleen Wolf from NFL Network because she's a Philly native. And I was just like, so, what, like, how much will be standing of the city if if they win and, and lose? And she's like, either way, that city is burning to the ground. Like, I'll be lucky if I see <laughs> anything left when I get back home after I'm done in Minnesota. <laughs> no, yeah, no kidding. I, I, I mean, it's funny because I, I saw a segment that was, uh, it was a guy and he was taking around an Eagles fan and he was talking to the Minnesota fans. And it was to show how nice the Minnesota fans were in comparison to, you know, the Eagles fans. And, and you know, so the guys, like, interviewing these, these um, you know, the, the the Minnesota fans, and they're like, what would you say to, you know, the, an Eagles fan? I got one right here. What would you say to them if you could say something mean? And they're like, oh, you played a great game, and, you know, <laughs> go out and do your best. And I'm like, I'm like, geez, Philadelphia, shame on you, these poor Minnesota fans. <laughs> Well, that's because Minnesota Minnesota fans are basically borderline Canadian. Like they're the closest that the NFL is going to get to have having a Canadian team is is the Vikings because (laughs) (laughs) I I do love the NFL for their resilience. Uh, They'll they'll go and play all over the world, but if there is if you think there's going to be an official team outside the U.S., like they won't even touch Canada. Like I don't know where people are getting this idea that we're going to have a London team when Canada doesn't even get a team yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I sometimes wonder, like, what the NFL board meetings are like, you know, with the owners. And they say, <laughs> you know, when Jerry Jarrah Jerry says, we're going to have a team in London, you know, and, and uh, you know, uh, Robert Kraft is like, yeah, I think we can make that happen. You know, it's like, who, like, what are these guys, do these, like, are these guys not taking their, their pills before they go into their <laughs> meetings? Like, that's not happening. You know, I just, it's not finance. This is what happens when billionaires, you know, that don't have enough to do when they're given something to play with, like the NFL, you know, and they go, Oh, we're going to expand this and we're going to put it in London. And everyone, including you and me, like regular fans are like, no, that's not happening. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a sad thing. I hate when, when fan bases, good fan bases lose a home game because uh, their team is playing overseas. And, And I've talked to a few fan bases and they're like, uh, we we don't get anything necessarily. I think maybe our season ticket prices are cheaper by like five bucks, but really that's that's the extent of it. <laughs> and I'm just like, thanks wow. NFL. Like that's that's yeah. gonna hurt. Uh, being over in Seattle well, though, um, because the Seahawks missed the playoffs this year, um, and they had yep, to watch the yep. Patriots go to another one. Uh, is this the end of of an era? Like, are we going to see a full on rebuild now in 2018? Yes. Yes, that's what's that's what's going to happen. It's what needs to happen. I mean, the 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 off season is going to be a lot tougher than than Seattle fans realize. I mean, we invested way too much money and a few players. And frankly, I think uh, when it comes down to is you got a franchise quarterback out of it, you got a few franchise defensive players, but it's time to rebuild. And I think that's just how the NFL is now, right? I mean. You know the 
the parody, it just doesn't allow for for you to be really good, you know, for that long unless you're the the Patriots and you know you you have like Yoda skills like Bill Belichick. I don't even know, but <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's going to be a full rebuild, Rich. I, I I really believe it, and I and and it's an unpopular opinion, you know, because people are saying, oh, well, you know, still we still got a good team and stuff. So yeah, we might. I mean, we might win nine games. That's my that's my prediction. You know, that's that's your hot take. You know, we might win nine games, and but but more than likely. I mean, you're probably going to see us finish third, maybe fourth in the division. Well, I mean, my hot take was that none of the teams that finished undefeated were going to go into the the postseason. In the preseason, we're going to make it to the postseason. And uh, I was right. I was seriously sweating there that that last weekend uh, to the point where I, I felt the need to send Andy Dalton a gift basket for for knocking out the <laughs> Ravens at the last minute there. <laughs> But I was yeah, like, it couldn't have happened. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy, Andy Dalton. <laughs> you know, way to go, Andy. <laughs> the one game he shows up to is the last one of the season to just to extinguish all hope in in Baltimore. But good on him. Um, do you think Seattle missed opportunities anywhere during the the time that they have had with the the core that took them to the Super Bowl? As far as a lot of fans I've talked to said that they needed this missing the playoffs thing to happen in order to really wake them up. So were there other things that needed to be addressed that weren't that eventually led us to where we are going to be in 2018 for Seattle? Yeah, ab- absolutely. I think one of the biggest things is that they got too cute with their drafts. I mean, uh, they, they, the whole trading down your first round pick every year, uh, and then, you know, taking a defensive tackle from Southern Oklahoma State Technical College to turn into your starting, left, you know, left tackle or whatever is, I mean, it's, you're, you know, you're, you're no longer relying on, you know, your personnel skills, you know, to draft. You're, 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 you're just making stuff up, you know. And I think that was one thing was that they're, they're, they had some, they had a couple really bad drafts, you know. I mean, they had some good drafts, obviously, before you, you know, with Bob, you got Bobby Wagner and Russell Wilson and even Tyler Lockett, but you know, um, there's, there just hasn't, there hasn't been, um, enough development of young players. I mean, Frank Clark has turned out to be okay. Um, and you know, Bruce Irvin, obviously we lost to free agency and he was the first round draft pick, but, uh, overall, I think that, that, that's a huge factor that people are overlooking is that, you know, John Schneider did a great job building the team and Pete Carroll did a good job building the team. Uh, the, the last two drafts, in my opinion, were S. I mean, they're S. There's no – because, you know, look at the major needs for the Seahawks. You know, it was – you know, they needed an offensive line and they needed a running back. And, you know, drafting a sixth rounder in Chris Carson, who turns out to be okay, and then he gets hurt, does not count as – you know, that doesn't that doesn't count as a good draft pick, you yeah. know. And, and, and the other – so here's the other thing that, that people – in Seattle, don't want to admit, but we're still not over that Super Bowl loss with the Patriots. <laughs> that affected, I mean, that is still affecting this team. And I think until you you sort of have a purge, a real purge, which we needed, which was missing the playoffs, um, you know, then then you know you're not going to have a chance to move forward. So that's number two, and number three, uh, I would say that that you know overall, I, I really don't think that Russell Wilson is is, is a good quarterback for the first two quarters of the game. I mean, and, and a lot of people will knock me for that, but he, you know, he's, he's a great quarterback in the third and fourth quarter, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, indisputable. I mean, he threw what 25 touchdown passes in the fourth quarter last year, which is great. But I mean, they didn't have a, they didn't have a scoring drive, you know, in the first quarter for, I think, I think it was like two years. I mean, like where they scored a touchdown. I mean, it's like, you know, that, that'll kill you. And they're behind in, you know, they're behind, you know, in every game. And so uh, I think, I think your quarterback play left a lot to be desired, uh, you know, in the first two quarters of, of every game, which, you know, puts so much pressure on your defense, which of course, you know, then at, by, you know, by the time the third and the fourth quarter come around, you know, they're exhausted. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh it, it was the same rhetoric all season long. So, uh, you know, it's apparently what what they needed Bevel is gone and and now they're going to start from from scratch, I guess. But uh there's still going to be some key components that stay. Obviously, Russell Wilson can't go anywhere. Don't, they, people don't want him to go anywhere, but 
The last question I have for you then is uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, is he the real deal, yes or no? Okay, so I, I don't want to offend you because I love you and you're my friend, but um, – that that was the dumbest contract of the off season. I mean, you could have signed him for three years. What three years? Fifty million, right? I mean, that that would have been a reasonable contract, you know, for a guy who who what played what, six games, right? They won six in a row. Is that uh, right? the, five in a row, five in a row. They went six five. and ten, but he won five in a row because Bethard won that first one against the Giants. Yeah, I mean, I, I outside of his contract. So that's my that's my last thing I'll say about the contract. I just think that was, I mean, that was a reach, but. I think he's a real deal, and uh, I, I I think that what I've heard is that he's a good leader, which um, is, is what you need in the NFL. And I think that I think he's had time to learn under some of the best. And frankly, Kyle Shanahan's not going to let him fail. The man is an offensive genius. He's he worries me more than Sean McVay times twenty. <laughs> you know, as far as the, as far as a coach, I mean, Sean McVay's is Sean McVay's our age. You know, yeah. like I mean. Like, I get it, you know, but, like, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure Sean McVay will get distracted by something, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Wade Phillips is, like, you know, 90 years old. So, I mean, I, I, I don't – I'm not worried about that. What what I'm worried about is is Kyle Shanahan with a full year and his team that he can put together and that – specifically that offense. I mean, what he did in Atlanta is just uh, – I mean, you saw the fall off of Sarkeesian. They were a totally different team. Yeah. you know, in, in Atlanta. And I, I think Jimmy G is the real deal. And I think he's got, I think he's got an incredible coach in, in Kyle Shanahan. All right, man. Well, I don't want to keep you from your cigar bar for too much longer, but I knew that this was a, uh, you know, monumental occasion, a very special occasion. I needed to have the guy who put the, uh, the inkling in my ear to, to even give this thing a, a try. But uh, I never forget about the people there from the very beginning. So I knew that uh, for this moment that Mr. Cameron Severance had to be on the show. Thank you. Hey, thank you again for having me. Like I said, huge fan show guy, huge Richard <laughs> team and guy. And Hey, number one in media. And don't forget that when you're listening, that, 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 that you are number, you know, that you're listening to the number one show, the fan show. All right, man. We'll go and uh, have a drink for me and, and a cigar for me as well, and you enjoy the rest of your evening, all right? Thanks, buddy. Good talking to you. All right, man. Take care. Bye. And once again, big thank you to my friend Cameron Severins, who gave me the idea to, to try this crazy thing. Now, of course, he's he's a very modest individual, but, um, you know, ideas have to come from somewhere. That's the source, ladies and gentlemen. Cameron Severins gave me the idea. Now, what it has evolved into Obviously, is a lot of my my own making and the feedback that I get from you you guys, the fans, the my friends, family, uh, all that pe- you know, all that stuff, uh, the people that I meet along the way. But it, it's got to start somewhere, and it started there. So I really appreciate him taking time to come on the show for a a uh, monumental monumental occasion. And with that, we're going to go to commercial break. Bring on my second guest. So don't go anywhere. We've got more of the fan show coming up right after this. This is The Sheet. It's me all revved up. My face is now red. My ears are just freaking boiling. He's so raw. He's so raw that Sky hates him. Yeah, he had 51 touchdowns. 4,900 total yards. I know y'all like that, but I gotta run. And only in Alabama that could happen, I have to say. They're so good. (laughs) Man, they would win the Big Ten if they were in the Big Ten. You could be doing something vision-based in front of you and reach down and grab a handful of insane goodness give it to him kudos i'm clapping like a golfer very good johnny i'm proud of you wow you guys agree on something again i'm very impressed you ever had a bad week you know just you walk outside step in a puddle like right when you walk outside i mean how's this puddle right outside the house are you you stand on the curb and somebody drives by and splashes water up on you or it's just raining on you not anyone else I, I will tell you before you go any further I cannot hear Chad when he speaks. Good. Here, listen to the sheet, man. I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m., right here on WBLZ Sports. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve all your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call, no matter the size of the job, at 740-438-7173. Mention WBLZ Sports, and you'll get a discount. 
That's Gen Service, 740-438-7173. This is Nick Ficarelli, the mad scientist of sports. Join me and Dr. D. Derek Jones live every Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific, for the Mad Scientist Sports Lab. The big get the wits, the experiments on the chalkboard, and the guest subjects will be rolling in. Mad Scientist Sports Lab, only on WBLZ Sports, where we got balls. Doug Pepper painting a pressure washing. He has over 30 years of painting experience. He's interior, exterior, commercial, or residential. Doug Pepper covers it all. Is your house looking ugh? We'll call on Doug. Doug Pepper painting and pressure washing. 404-966-3361. Mention WBLZ Sports and get a special We've Got Balls discount. That's Doug Pepper painting and pressure washing. 404-966-3361. Check out Thursday Night Tailgate where NFL legends live on. We bring you five NFL legends every week, sharing their stories and insights, plus our spotlight on the positive. Hear which players are doing great things in their communities. Now on WBLZ Sports Talk Radio and WBLZSports.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back and continuing our countdown to the IFL season kickoff is none other than a member of the Green Bay Blizzard, Manny Asprilla. How are you doing, Manny? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing great, man. Glad to have you on the now award-winning fan show, and I appreciate your your vote of confidence and and share on that. It means a lot, and I'm excited to come see you guys again this season. Yeah, definitely can't wait for the season to start. What game do you think about going to? Uh, May 5th, your big Star Wars night. Ryan uh, Hobson's convinced me that that uh, should be a destination um, for me <laughs> at that particular time. I heard he's got big plans for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But how's the uh, how's the off season and the, the kickoff preparation been going for you, you guys? Host um, Iowa, which is a big game for you guys. They're kind of a, a rival for you and uh, – you know, you guys really had it sort of meshing well towards the end of last season. So, what's uh, going into a new season been like? Uh, you know, uh, last season was most of our first time playing uh, indoor football. So, uh, this off season we had a lot to work on, and uh, going into the n- new season, um, we're pretty much a lot of us are pretty comfortable with you know how to play the game now, seeing how we kind of got used to it since last season. Uh, we got a lot of good new guys on the team, you know, a lot of great players. And, uh, you know, we, we're just trying to get them ready, too, and, you know, spread our knowledge to them on what to expect and how the game is pretty much played. So, uh, and we, we let them know how big this week is for us. Not only is it the first game for us to show what we can do, but it's also, like you said, a rivalry game for us, and it's going to be a big game, great game, too. Yeah, I'm expecting a great matchup between you two. Now, I know that um, because the season didn't quite go how a lot of people wanted it to last year, that there was a uh, question about whether or not Coach Williams would be coming back. I thought that there wasn't enough reason for him not to come back because I, I know he's a he's a player's coach. Every one of you guys that I've talked to says the same thing about him, nothing but high praise. So I'm glad that he's back for another season and, and hopefully he can help build something great up there in Green Bay. Now, as far as um the consistency and everything what's what's it uh been like to have coach williams back with you and and know so many of the team and and get prepped for this season coach williams is a great coach you know as you said he's, he's really a player's coach and there's no other coach i'd rather play for you know going into the season and uh he he prepares us perfectly everything everything we do is, is very it's very direct and, and you know we're very focused and you know, he doesn't, I would say, overdo it. You know, he, he makes sure to take care of his players and make sure our bodies are right and, and make sure we get just as much mental reps as we do physical reps. And uh, he's really good with that. And, uh, you know, our last season, it didn't go as planned. 
but I wouldn't say that it was terrible for us because, you know, we got to see the game for the first time. And I'll, not only that, but, you know, most of the games were were very close for us. And, uh, you know, those are the worst games, you know, the nail-biting games that come down to the last play of the game. You know, those are the worst. But, you know, it, it was still, you know, I was still pretty impressed with how we played and how we fought. We just need to finish this year. Yeah, and I think that that's what I saw from you guys last year. I was there for your, your last home game against uh, Salt Lake, and it was uh, a great game all the way through, uh, all the way to the finish. And uh, you guys have had uh, – you've lost some players, obviously, on the offensive side. Markel Willis, he uh, he called it quits as far as hanging up the cleats uh, after last season. Jack Bramswig has gone to the CFL. And then there was a trade last week. Uh, one of your defensive backs uh, went to the Nebraska Danger. But you guys still have B.J. Hill, who got top 10 honors on the IFL. So what's it take uh, during an offseason and during camp to make sure that, you know, not only do you uh, pick – up where you left off last season but that you were able to do it with the new faces and and the new guys that you have on the roster well first of all i want to congratulate you know bj on his honors but um every year there's going to be you know new guys coming in and, and old faces leaving you know in any in any sport or any game that you're playing and uh what people what we have to understand is that even though some of the great players are gone the next people in line have to come in and fill their shoes and uh, and not try to emulate what they did, but try to surpass what they what they did. And uh, that's the mindset you have to have when you're coming in. You know, you you never want to come in and you know think, oh, well, I'm not going to be that good, or 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 even as like a player, like one of the other players, thinking, okay, nobody is going to be able, is going to be able to replace the guy that we had before. You know, you can't have that mindset. You got to come in and believe that it's going to happen. You know, because great players coming in now every year. What would a win? this weekend at home to, to start the season off mean for you guys? It would, it would definitely build a lot of confidence in our, in our team. You know, as, as I said before, we're fairly new. Um, you know, we're, we're building a bond, you know, it, stronger than last season, I would say, you know, seeing a lot of new faces and it definitely builds faster and stronger than last season. But a win would definitely boost a lot of confidence and, you know, get us on the right track to having a great season. Even if we lost, you know, it, it would be tough to take a loss, but it wouldn't break us, so to speak. But we definitely need a confidence booster uh, going into our second game. I, mean, I know it's just our first game, but if we would win, you know, we would need that confidence going into our second week. And when it comes to a coach like Chris Williams, is he the kind of guy that kind of preaches the same thing every season, or does he maybe adjust what what he wants you guys to take from each season in accordance with kind of the the core group that he's got there, or, or maybe the some of the the roster changes to maybe make sure that this team, because like you said, every team is different. You're gonna get new guys. You're gonna lose some of the older guys, but. Uh, what what's it like for a coach? Um, is he someone that sort of sticks behind the same fundamentals, or does he tweak it based on you know season to season? No, he definitely keeps the same approach going into each season, as I've seen, um, and as I talked to the new guys on what I was you know uh, experiencing and what I was told was going to happen last season and how we approached last season. Uh, the new guys sort of said that it's pretty much the same exact thing as what they've been told going into this season. And I noticed it too, obviously, but um, he definitely keeps the same approach. Uh, a couple tweaks here and there only because, uh, you know, based on the season before, how we played and, and how we prepared and, and, and all that, you know, you don't, you know, don't fix it if it's not broken, but if there's definitely room for improvement, then you can make in these adjustments. So that's the kind of the way he goes. Same approach, a couple tweaks. Now, um, there was some issues that happened in the offseason. I talked to Mark Kell about it. He said that, you know, in, in his time in the IFL, it was probably one of the worst offseasons uh, that he, he can recall in recent memory. And I've talked to a few different players about it. And, you know, once the season starts, I, I kind of want to make sure that everything's been put behind us. But as someone who has a home and has had a home with a team that will play this season, I, I mean, what, what's it like to have friends out there that their futures, their fates for 2018 are sort of still undecided? Like, it, it, have they reached out to you? Do you give them any sort of, you know, words of confidence or anything like that? Or is it sort of a, a subject that you don't really want to touch on because you know it's a sensitive one? Uh, I mean, I, I talked to some of the guys, but it's kind of not really a subject I, <laughs> I really want to touch on. Like you said, it, it's pretty sensitive. But I definitely talked to some of the guys, and, you know, we just we have personal conversations about it all. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I get that. Well, I mean, you guys are going to have a season, and uh, there's six teams in the league right now. And, of course, there's the defending champion, Rattlers. You still have the Storm in there. Uh, Nebraska kind of has a, a whole new look with their new um, coaching staff, new offensive coordinator, former IFL uh, Empire head coach Adam Shackelford, and then the Titans now under the direction of Marvin Jones. Is there any team – out there that you uh, circled on the calendar as far as a, a matchup that you're particularly looking forward to this season? Not really. I treat every team the same, uh, whether they're the best or the worst. I've always had that mindset um, playing football in my entire life. I've never looked forward to one single game. I've always looked forward to every single game, and I take every uh, each week one day at a time. You know, I couldn't even tell you who, who would be playing third, fourth, and fifth game. Like I, I couldn't be able to tell you that. I can barely tell you. The second game, you know, I, I didn't even know the exact date of this week's game. All I know is that each day I'm, I'm going to prepare for the next game. And, you know, every game is a big game to me, to be honest, because, you know, the camera's still rolling always. And, and no matter the outcome, I I, I plan and, and prepare myself to put on, you know, the best performance I can. So what are you hoping to get out of this season as far as on a personal level? Do you have a goal in mind uh, as far as like a certain stat or, uh, you know, maybe something that you want to accomplish that you didn't get a chance to last year? Um, well, my goal has always been to get back to playing at the next level. Um, I had a shot when I first came out of college and injuries have been, you know, pretty much hurting my my opportunities. But I'm not really a, a big stat guy. Just just want to play at the next level again. And uh, I would say that my next biggest goal under that would be to stay healthy because, as I said, you know, I've, had, I've gone through a lot of injuries and it's, it's, it's been a lot of major setbacks and I'm just waiting for that big comeback. Yeah, I completely agree. It's it's been nice to see so many of you guys out of Green Bay uh, get opportunities at that next level. Obviously, Jack going to the C, CFL and then all the uh, invites that you guys got to camp. Is that kind of the biggest selling point for Green Bay is just uh, where it is and, and its relevance to you know guys looking for next level talent? Is that what sold you on it ultimately or was it something else? It was definitely that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, Coach, <laughs> Coach Williams, I think he uses that line with everybody. You know, when he first reached out to me before last season, uh, I rejected his offer to come play for Green Bay. And, you know, if I told you that, I, I, I knew I would be playing here like, again for a second season, I'd be lying. But, you know, when he reached out to me a second time uh, before last season, he threw that out there like, hey, our location, you know, we're right next to the Packers and we can get you opportunities. We've done it before. The minute he said that, it didn't matter where I was playing. I could have been playing in a mud pit. It didn't matter. Like I was literally going to be. I was like, I'm going. I've never seen Green Bay. Never been to Green Bay. I heard it's just cold. Something about cheese with everybody. I don't know. I didn't care. I just knew that the Packers are right next door, and and, and this was the place to be. <laughs> yeah, you you do find yourself buying pants the next size up when you make make a trip to to Green Bay. I couldn't imagine living there for an extended period of time. I definitely gained a couple pounds. <laughs> They, they feed you well, and that, that's the important thing, right? Keep you warm in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys yeah, don't have yeah. to worry too much about winter uh, because it is a, a spring and summer league, and it's going to get kicked off uh, this week, actually. And it starts out with the Cedar Rapids and uh, Nebraska Danger game, which will be a good one. And then you guys will play. Now, I'll be in Arizona for that game uh, to kick things off, but I will be watching your guys' uh, film and, of course, keeping up with the updates because I'm going to have the uh, the power rankings every week and maybe a few new things to, to do on the, the site and the page for the show. But nonetheless, I'm very excited to see all you guys again, and I want to wish you uh, the very best this season, and I appreciate you taking the time to be on the show, Manny. It's been a pleasure. I, I, wanna pre- I appreciate you uh, having me on the show. Looking forward to a great season. All right, man. Well, you tell... Uh, Coach Williams, I said hello, and not to work you guys, you know, hard but not too hard because you guys are uh, <laughs> gonna gonna kick ass against Iowa this weekend. But uh, hey, uh, good luck to you, and uh, you get some rest, and uh, have a good rest of your week. Thank you. Take care. And once again, that was Manny Asprilla, member of the Green Bay Blizzard, and it it is crazy to think that when when it comes to enticing players to come play with them because uh, you know you watch ballers or, or you hear analysts and others talk about like a desirable market 
and how this team isn't very desirable because they live uh, like, okay, so let's use the, the Buffalo Bills, for example. Like, Buffalo's not a desirable destination for free agents because it, it's cold there. You're always playing in the snow. The, the fan base is a little crazy, but they're a passionate fan base nonetheless. And they, uh, you know, they just ended their, their playoff drought. So maybe that's a little bit more enticing than it was a year or two years ago. But um, then you think about how L.A. has two teams now, Miami, one team. But of of those three teams, it was only the Rams that made the postseason. And it's from from what I've been told, the Coliseum's not the, the greatest place to play. But for me, if I'm a player, like I, I get that you don't have – control of the other 52 guys on the roster and and how how good you do or don't do in a season but I mean you do contribute right so if I'm a free agent and and the ring is the ultimate goal right the uh the ring is is the prize it's the light at the end of the tunnel and then the the one after that is getting that gold jacket in Canton so if winning the championship is the ultimate goal I I don't care how sunny and friendly Miami or Tampa are year round. And, and, you know, you got the, the women running around in bikinis all day and the humidity and, and fancy cars and beautiful scenery. It's like green Bay is title town and they're almost contenders every year. So <laughs> I mean, I, why not? I mean, so, so what it's cold. I've just never understood the, the whole, uh, you know, different sports markets and cities and, and their marketability for when it comes to trying to entice players there. Obviously, you know, on the NFL level, you look at the big four. You've got Pittsburgh, San Francisco, Dallas, uh, Green Bay. You probably throw New England in there, even though that's been a kind of this generation thing, right? So the big five, and of course, New England, not very, very, very warm during the NFL season there. I mean, they have a lot and I mean a lot of cold weather. Uh, and so then you've got Green Bay, the frozen tundra. You've got Dallas, AT&T Stadium, that monstrosity of a thing with its big screen. Uh, San Francisco now playing in Santa Clara uh, in the nice sunny weather. And then Pittsburgh, which is pretty much 50-50, but probably more cold than not during football season. But all five of those teams, one, have... a great history great pedigree as far as the the legends and hall of famers that have come out of there uh, i mean yeah maybe dallas hasn't been as relevant now as it was back in the 90s and, and same with san francisco now as it was back in the 80s and early 90s but you got to think that that's that's bound to change because these are organizations that are known for being competitors green bay though they're always in it uh, Aaron Rodgers got hurt, so obviously, you know, that was a huge factor in why they didn't make it to the postseason. Um, New England, I mean, everybody that's a free agent wants to go there because they, they have a legit shot at winning a championship. And then Pittsburgh, you got to think the same thing. But if you're talking sunny, I mean, Jacksonville up until this year, yeah, it's sunny, it's warm, you play outdoors, and, and maybe there's like some tropical storms. But other than that, it's a great city. Uh, you go across seas and travel to London once a year. But up until this last year, I'm not going there because I'm thinking postseason. Miami, I'm not going there because I'm thinking postseason. Same thing with Tampa Bay. Uh, New Orleans, probably going to go there uh, because you're thinking postseason now. But still, uh, to be on a team with Drew Brees, you'd probably think that you always have a chance. Uh, Seattle? It rains all the time. It gets cold during the winter. But up until this year, you would probably go there because you felt you, you, you were thinking postseason. But you're not going to go there because you're wanting to go and spend a night out on the town. And there's a lot to do there. Don't get me wrong. But not compared to like L.A., Dallas, Miami, New York, uh, one of the big cities that we're missing. But I just I've never quite understood that. If I'm a player, I would take a pay cut for a shot a legitimate shot at, at a postseason to see what what that team could accomplish with me pulling my weight so for for manny to say yeah man i mean it, the fact that so many players get invites and and 
trips to camps from here and we're right next to the Packers. Absolutely, it was a selling point. It's freezing cold, but hell yeah, I'm here. I'm ready. I love that. That is that is the passion of a player that you have to admire and respect from from a talented player like that. So, Manny, uh, thank you so much for being on the show again. I really do appreciate it. And that's going to do it for this uh, Tuesday edition of the Fan Show. Don't forget, we did do a comedy special. It was not live. It wasn't really anything other than me interviewing some comedians for my friend Mark Morris, who I met at Tenabulation Music Festival. And he was like, hey, you know, if you're looking for something to do, come and check out this uh, comedy showcase I've got. Oh, so many laughs. I mean, those those are some of my favorite episodes where you're just you're getting to know people and you're just having a good time laughing a lot. And what better way than with uh, the four different comedians? Right. So go and check that one out. But uh, yeah, we'll be back. Same fan show time, same fan show place tomorrow and Thursday. This is the countdown to IFL kickoff. I've got great guests. That's right. Plural multiple for each night coming up. And then the Fan Show Tour 2018 officially kicks off this weekend in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, how about that? Another place that the weather, but probably not thinking postseason there, but it's desert heat. It's a dry heat. Do you want to go there? Anyway, we can talk more about that tomorrow. But uh, follow the show on Twitter at Fan Show Official, Facebook.com slash Fan Show Official. And then, of course, the Instagram is The Fan Show. The home base for things football and nonsense is thefanshow.com. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud, even though I apologize if this episode also does not show up there. We're trying to get this glitch figured out. But you can always go to Spreaker.com as well as iHeartRadio and catch all the latest episodes on thefanshow.com. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you again so much from the very bottom of my heart for your votes and your shares. It is an indescribable feeling to now be the award winning the fan show. So until, until next time, best of luck to you and yours go Niners. And remember it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his own player spot? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.